Hello, uh, people. Hi. So, uh, I'm going to do a quick crash course of Adobe Animate. So, uh, let's get started. First of all, you are going to want to download Adobe Animate. You go to the Creative Cloud. It should be um, version 23.0.1. And then you click download, then you have it. Great. Awesome. When you first open Adobe Animate, you're going to be introduced to this screen. And what you want to do is you want to create a new document. Here on this screen, full HD. So 1920 by 1080, change frame rate to 30 FPS. Great, so now that you have created your file, you want to make sure you have a few things first. So go to window, you wanna make sure that you have properties, color, and library. These are the three main things that you want. With any software, you wanna know how to navigate the interface. Use the mouse wheel to go up and down. Holding control and using the mouse wheel will let you zoom in and out. Holding shift and using the mouse wheel will let you go side to side. If you want to zoom in on a specific area, then holding Z and selecting an area with um, by left clicking, you can zoom in on a specific part of the board. You can also just use the magnifying tool by just clicking Z and clicking anywhere and that will let you zoom in on different parts of your board and holding Alt and then uh, left clicking will let you zoom out. Now let's talk about the brush tool. You really want to use shortcuts for Adobe Animate to really uh, do things efficiently. Clicking B will let you use the brush tool, well, the classic brush tool. And here you can do a few things. You can change the fill by clicking this rectangular box and selecting any of these colors. These are the default swatches, um, but you can also go to the color wheel. You can also change the opacity. So um, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> you can change the size of your brush. Another thing you can do is change the brush type. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so this one is really interesting. With the brush tool, you can enter and exit object drawing mode. So by default, you will not be in drawing mode. But basically what this does is when you draw something and you don't have object drawing mode on, then the entire drawing is um, just lets you select all of it. When you turn on object drawing mode, then anything you draw will turn into, we'll just give it this bounding box, I guess. And if you want to edit the actual drawing, then you have to double click. And this will put you into a new scene and there you can draw. Okay, so this next thing is really important. So what you can do is you can change the paint settings. So here we have by default, it'll be set to paint normal. There's also paint fills only, paint behind, paint selection, and paint inside. What you want to do is paint behind. Yes, so you can paint behind the character. But yeah, you can play around with these settings. You want to have this setting on. So this is pen pressure. And since we are using tablets and using a stylus, you really want to have this on so that you can get some like nice looking strokes. When you are drawing, you can switch between colors using X. So hitting X will let you switch between what fill color you're using. This is really helpful when you are coloring your character. One thing you really, 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 really need to use is uh, Control Z. Now on to the eraser tool. The shortcut for the eraser tool is E and yeah, you just erase things with it. So like the brush tool, you can change the eraser type and the size. A very important tool that you will find yourself using a lot is the paint bucket tool. For the paint bucket tool, the shortcut is K. Basically you will fill in areas where you have a bounded drawing and fill it in with a certain color. Another tool you will use a lot is the eyedropper tool. The shortcut for that tool is I. So if you want a specific color, and it's somewhere in your scene like any color that is in the artboard you can use the eyedropper tool and it'll send you to the paint bucket tool and then you can just use it one thing i didn't mention is with the brush tool you can change the size with the shortcut left bracket to decrease the size and right bracket to increase the size this is super helpful what you'll probably use a lot is the lasso tool with the lasso tool you just it's like photoshop you just select an area and you have that area selected and then you can move it 
Another tool you will use a lot, a lot is the free transform tool, shortcut Q. So with the free transform tool, clicking Y will give you this box with these um, points and you can just manipulate the shape of whatever you have selected. This point acts as a pivot point from which you will have things manipulated. So if you have it in the center, then um, if you have it over here, then from there, any changes you make will affect it. If you're expanding or shrinking something and you want that change to be consistent, then by holding shift and selecting one of these corner points, you can change it and it will be consistent. Also holding control and manipulating one of these points will create this sort of effect. Holding alt and manipulating it will only change the side that you have selected. Okay, so those are the basic tools that you will use throughout animating. Now the timeline is basically the inner workings of the animation where you can manipulate uh, your animation. When animating, you will create frames. So there are three types of frames. First one is just a frame. Shortcut to create a frame is F5 and you can select any point in your timeline and click F5 and it'll create those frames for you. The other frame you will use is the keyframe, and the shortcut for that is F6. When you click F6, it will create a keyframe for you. The difference between a keyframe and a frame is that frames are basically the length of the keyframe, if that makes sense. It just sort of stems off the keyframe. Uh, the keyframe is really the place where it actually has a drawing. If you delete this drawing, which is Control X, then you can see that it turns into a blank keyframe. To create a blank keyframe, you are going to hit F7. This will create a blank keyframe. Also, if you're not super comfortable with the shortcuts, you can hit right click. It will give you options to create these types of frames. You also want to access this for different things as well. When animating, you really want to use blank keyframes if you are going to do frame by frame animation. So like this. And then you hit F7 and you create a blank keyframe. At this point, you also want to use the onion skip tool and you can manipulate how many frames you see back and how many frames you see forward with the onion skip tool. But yeah, this helps immensely with animating. To play your animation, you want to hit enter. You can also click this button here. You can also click this loop tool, change uh, the length of it, and this will loop your animation, which is really cool. Going back to the menu here, by right-clicking, you have a lot of options here. The tools I use the most here are remove frames here and copy and pasting frames here. Yeah, you can also convert to keyframes. So if you want to select an area in your timeline that you just want to remove, you can click a certain point, holding shift and clicking Another point, this allows you to select the entire area between right clicking and then removing frames and clicking this will just remove that area. You can also copy and paste frames, which is super, super helpful. Selecting an area and then right clicking and then clicking copy frames, which is control alt C lets you paste it. You can right click here and paste the frames. This is incredibly helpful if you want to copy and paste frames that you have already made. Also, I recommend using the shortcut. So shift alt C and then hit control alt V. Okay, so the timeline shows a lot of stuff. It shows the FPS, and you can also change this and many of the document settings that we saw before right over here in properties doc. So you can change the size of the canvas, you can change the stage color, and you can change the frames per second. You have the layers here. You can create a new layer, delete it, you can change the name. You can lock layers and you can hide layers. Okay, since this project requires that we animate in 30 frames per second, there's a thing you can do that will facilitate animation. And that is using tweens. Tweens are super, 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 super important. And I recommend that all of you guys use them. So to make a tween, you need symbols. We'll select the entire drawing, then right click, convert to symbol, F8. It will give you this box. You can name the symbol and you can change the type graphic. And then you click OK. You can only edit it by double left clicking. And if you want to use a tween, you need at least two keyframes, F6. You can put the symbol wherever. Clicking anywhere in between those two keyframes, right click classic tween, have the computer generate an animation for you. You can probably see how this is super 
super helpful for animating. Boring. It's moving at the same pace. What you can do is clicking in this tween. You can go over here under properties and frame. You can change the ease. So clicking here, options, ease in, ease out, ease in out. Super cool. Ease in will start off slow, then to a higher speed. Ease out fast, slows down. Ease in out slow, fast, slow. If we choose ease in cubic, starts slow, ramps up in speed, and change the value here. A value over zero, ease out, and any value under zero, ease in. Another twin that you want to use, the motion twin. To access your symbols, by the way, click the library. This will show graphics, movie clips, buttons, and images, and audio. Symbol, drag it in. Right-clicking motion tween. At any point in the timeline, move the graphic line of points. Manipulate this, it will create that animation for you. Create an ease. Ease out, ease in. The last tween, shape tween. You can't use a symbol for shape tweens. With two keyframes, you will create a shape. And next keyframe, a completely new object of any shape and color. And you select shape tween, transition from one shape to the other. It's super cool. Facilitate animation. That is it. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions, ask me or Shannon or, you know, Coach Sang. So yeah. Bye.